Hey, everybody, coming to you live from the Pandemic Studios. <laughs> if some of you have been watching for a while, you recognize the background. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bill Vitiello. I am the Director of Institutional Relationships and Marketing for the Victory Bank in Limerick. Welcome to this episode of Chamber Chat Live, brought to you by the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, before we bring on today's guest, I just wanted to uh, say that this morning, got back from a nice in-person networking breakfast over at Arcadia at Limerick Point. Um, if you've never been over there, uh, by all means, reach out to Kim over there or reach out to somebody in the chamber to get you in touch with uh, Kim. Uh, we had a real nice group there this morning. Uh, Kim gave a nice presentation, and then we actually got a chance to have a tour of the facility, which will blow your mind. <laughs> so uh, if you know somebody who's looking for independent senior living, uh, what a great opportunity of so many amenities over there. And the staff uh, could not be more welcoming uh, this morning. They were just fantastic. Um, and the food was good, too. I had the ham and cheese quiche, I believe it was, and a little yogurt parfait. So, uh, so now everybody knows what I had for breakfast. So there's that. <laughs> but uh, again, welcome to this episode. Um, you might have heard uh, in one of the last episodes, um, unfortunately, I will be stepping aside as host of Chamber Chat but I would encourage uh, somebody from the community or somebody from the uh, chamber constituency to please reach out if you're interested in continuing this. And we'd also welcome your ideas and any type of collaboration that you can possibly offer to help direct the um, vision of what this program is gonna look like in the future. So wanted to make sure I reminded everybody of that. And um, I think we're ready to go. So without further ado, I will bring on uh, today's guest. And again, I told you this was Banker Week, um, so, and this is no exception here. So with me today is Joe Berkowitz. Joe is the VP of Commercial Lending at Harleysville Bank. Joe, how are you? It's good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to be on here with you. Yeah, that's, all, that's awesome. Um, you know, it's been a while since we connected. So first of all, I have to ask, how are you doing? Great. Yeah. Great. Good, good. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't, thankfully knock on wood, couldn't be better at the moment. You know, everything is good. You know, every, you know, healthy, happy, um, no, you know, no issues. So that's, that's good. That's a, that's a health is always the, the paramount issue, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. So for the folks, I, I feel like you might know everybody who's probably watching literally the thousands of people who watch this. <laughs> um, but for those who don't know you, can you please uh, introduce yourself and what you do for the bank? So yes, my so my name is Joe Burquist. I'm a commercial lender. Uh, I'm I, I work for Harleysville Bank. I've been working for them for the last five years. I've uh, been in banking for 21 years now. I can't can't believe it's been been two decades already. It's pretty pretty amazing. And I'm sure we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, but basically, as a commercial lender, uh, what that means is that effectively I do business loans for the bank. Uh, so and, and anything that would fall into that category is mo mostly real estate transactions. Like if somebody wants to buy a commercial building, but it could also mean you know giving somebody a line of credit giving somebody a term loan uh or, or something uh even as simple as just you know setting up achs for business you know monthly business transactions and things like that nice and i, I know you guys are pretty busy in that uh space just as we are so it's it's great that we're able to both uh, support the community um you said how many years in banking again 21 21 year 21 years in banking yes i started yeah i actually started I actually started back in kind of late 1990 you know probably it was probably like around december of 1999 uh was when i started in so it was like yeah so it's you know so it's a little 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 past it but it was uh uh but yeah so it's been it's been it's been an amazing ride man i i, I was thinking the other day you know i've seen a I, I saw the dot com bubble burst. Uh, you know, I still went through the Great Recession. Now living through this pandemic, so yeah, I've been yeah, been been in, seen and done a lot in my. Uh, it's kind of weird, my somewhat short career so far. <laughs> and what what about? Uh, uh, I was just thinking the other day about Y two K. Oh yeah, yeah. Being, yeah, and it was that too, right? Yeah. Well, and it and it was it was so funny because I remember when and again again starting in like the beginning of December 1999. That's all anybody was was talking about. I mean, again, I was I was you know very young and just you know working in in, in a retail branch at that point. So I mean, I didn't really you know know too much about anything at that point, just being a, a total rookie and just starting out. But um, it, but yeah, I mean that. But you could tell even then, as as young and inexperienced as I was, I could tell that obviously why. 2K was was a big thing, and the the IT people were were very concerned about it and whatever. And then it, it kind of turned into like a nothing burger. It just kind of right. you know, it just kind of like you know, the 31st came and went, New Year's came and went, and everybody was kind of like, 
all right, we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the world didn't end. Yeah. I mean, you we know, thought so. traffic lights were going to shut down and uh, yep. computers, this and that it just, it was, it was crazy, but um, we could probably spend a whole episode just on uh, recounting that. But <laughs> um, so for folks that don't know um, Harleysville bank, can you give us a little bit of a history uh, of the bank? I know it, it's quite storied. Yeah, so it's a so it's a it's a it's a very uh, a very cool story. Uh, something that I've learned over the last few years being there. So so the bank is a little over a uh, hundred years old. The the bank I believe started in 1915, so it's about 106 years old at this point. And there was a couple of, of individuals there in Harleysville uh, back in the, you know probably around 1910, 1911, whatever that basically said, hey, you know we don't we don't have a bank out this way. We don't have an insurance company out this way. Uh, we don't have a savings and loan association out this way just for making home loans. Um, and so they, so they basically they, a couple people in the town got together and said, Hey, look, we're going to, we're going to start a couple things here. So they started a bank, which became Harleysville national bank, uh, not, not to be confused with us, but Har Harleysville national. Uh, we started out actually as Harleysville savings and loans. We actually started out as just a small savings and loan operation. Um, just do what you basically, and, and for people who aren't familiar with the way that a savings and loan operated back then, it was basically, you just, you took in CDs and you made mortgages. Like, so you'd come in and say, Hey, I want a mortgage. And then we would just take in CDs. You'd offer CD rates. And then you would just, that's the CDs were the liquidity that you used to make the mortgages. And that's, it was very simple, uh, very simple and straightforward. And they, they literally operated out of a house. They just, they, they had a house there, had a couple people on the first floor of the house. And that's, that's, that's kind of what they did. And, and the third piece of it, that was they started Harleysville insurance. And of course, a lot of, a lot of people were at Harleysville insurance, obviously became a very large insurance company in the area, uh, which eventually got uh, bought by Nationwide. Um, there was a little bit of chatter uh, recently because the, uh, the old Harleysville national building over there in Harleysville just got sold uh, to another, uh, to another investor. Um, so we'll have to, we'll have to see what they ultimately plan or, or do in terms of developing that building, but it's, it's a sizable building. I mean, it's a big building over there, but so they, they, so they developed these three companies. You had Harleysville national Harleysville savings and loan and Harleysville insurance. And all three of these became basically staples of the community. They had, they really kind of blossomed over the years into really sound, strong businesses, strong companies, uh, had a lot of, uh, really drove a lot of the economic growth in that, that market area over there. Um, you know, stretching in, in all kind of a, a, a you know, circumference around the, the various towns, you know, going up to Telford, Soderton and, and some of the other local areas. And uh, so naturally, Harleysville Savings and Loan kind of over the years, it kind of grew up and it became a, a savings bank, thrift. And then in uh, 2006, uh, Harleysville actually converted converted into a commercial bank. Um, so we've, we've been doing commercial banking since 2006. And, uh, and, and basically it was always, and then it became Har it became Harleysville Savings Alone, became Harleysville Savings Bank. Um, and then what happened was Harleysville National got bought by First Niagara and then First Niagara bought Key Bank. And then when Key Bank bought them, they basically did not retain any, any of the naming rights at that point to Harleysville National. So we, we acquired those, brought those in house. And then once we had those, then we decided to change the name uh, just shorten the name just to Harleysville Bank. So we dropped the savings at that point. And that was that was back in 2018. So that was about three years ago. So we just we dropped the savings, went to Harleysville Bank. And uh, and so far, it's been it's been a very good change for us. That's awesome. And I, I it just it, it just I think it speaks to uh, this area, uh, how much history is in the area. And, and like you were saying, you know, it used to be done, you know, back in a house back in the day. Um, we were just talking about the Limerick Township building uh, this morning. Used to business used to be conducted out of a house, and the board <laughs> meetings would be around the kitchen table with everybody smoking, and you know. So uh, you know, it's just it's one of those things as time goes on. Um, I, I wanted to ask you. So if let, let's just say I'm a small business, right, and I'm interested in having a conversation with you, can you just kind of give me like a high level overview on what that conversation would sound like? And what some of the things might be that you look for? I'm, I'm not asking for like a formal checklist, but there might be some folks that are curious, might not know the banking space all that well, and honestly might not know what questions to ask. So if you just kind of just give a just kind of a brief guide on, on what to expect in a first conversation with you. 
It, and that, that's a that's a great question, Bill, and I'm glad you brought it up. And as a as a very small sidebar, I just want to say I saw some statistics uh, just last week that I was really surprised to learn. There's actually been kind of a boom in startup businesses in the U.S. over the last year. Uh, I was really surprised by that. Then the number was I don't have it in front of me, but it was it was a it was a really big number, much larger than than any year in the last five years. So uh, that's a very timely question. With that, I mean, I, I, I'm very excited to see that kind of economic. Uh, or I'm sorry, entrepreneurial activity in in the market right now. But yeah, so if if somebody came in and basically the first time, I think if if you're still in your first two years of business, I think the important thing is to have a business plan. And, and again, I, I try to tell people, I think what happens with a lot of people is that they think business plan, they think of like some, like, like, like a 30, 50 page document that's got all these, these, you know, very deep granular details. And, and I, I try to tell people like, like, no, your, your business plan can literally be two pages. Like it does not have to be this over the top plan. Um, but what you, but what you, the, the intricate piece to it is you want to have some kind of projection for the business. You know, you want to have some kind of income statement, uh, some kind of balance sheet. If you can, if you can kind of pull one together, might not might not be much on there at first. It might just be basically, you know, just cash. You know, maybe you own a truck or something like that. I mean, you know, it'd probably be a, a pretty, uh, you know, pretty simplistic balance sheet. But the um, but the the projected income statement is really where it's at because that's that's really as a banker, you know, that's what I want to go to. I'm I'm because you know there there's an old saying is that you know banks are we're cash flow lenders. You know, we're always looking at that cash flow first. You know, uh, the very first thing is. The, we always have to ask the question, you know, can you afford to repay the debt that you're asking me to give you? You know, so so that that repayment of debt is always the the number one for it's not the only thing. There's obviously a lot of many, many more factors, collateral, uh, you know, carry, you know, getting into like the five C's of credit, ca ca collateral, cash flow, character. Um, but you know, but that's that's really where it starts. I mean, that's the crux of it is basically like have have at least a business plan that tries to hit the basics. You know, where are you going to operate? How many employees you're going to have? Maybe talk about some of the vendors that you're going to use in terms of like a, a lawyer, an accountant, a payroll company. Um, where are you going to be based out of? Are you just is this are, is this going to be a home based business? Are you planning on renting a space? Uh, you know, maybe you're maybe, maybe a family member is giving you a space to use or something like that. But but just important to kind of detail those key things out. Um, and, and insur insurance, insurance is a big one, you know, like what, you know, do, do, do you have your insurance in place? Do you have general liability in place? Do you have, uh, do you need workman's comp if you have employees? Um, do you need any other type of specialty insurance for what, for whatever it is that you're doing? So, um, those are all very key things that I would go into. Um, but then on top of all that, you know, the person's experience, you know, and in other words, okay, you're going into this business. Is this a, is this a totally brand new business for you? Or is this something like, have you had, uh, some interactions with this, uh, over the years? And, uh, like, I, like, I love to use, um, a matter of fact, uh, another sidebar. So I think you and I originally met at Goose's. Mm. At Goose's, at Goose's, uh, Su Super Cigar Lounge over there in Limerick, uh, many yeah. years ago. And so I, I, I like I like to use Goose. I'll give Goose a plug here for a minute. So Goose was a very interesting case because he had been in the cigar business for a long. He, I mean, he didn't he didn't own like a retail store, but he had been in that business for 25 years. So he he knew it. He knew the business. He knew the you know he knew the pricing structure. He knew the mar profit margins. Like okay, I need to sell a cigar for this in order to make X amount of money. Um, and he just he knew what would sell. He knew what wouldn't sell. He was a very good salesman himself. So he, he, he had a lot of these very key details and that gave me a lot of confidence to basically say, you know, you know what, like this, this gentleman, this guy, this guy, he know he knows what he's doing. He's got a really good handle on the business. And even though he hasn't run a retail store per se, he just has a lot of intricate knowledge on the industry as a whole. And he, he's going to be okay running this, you know? And I think that's a very important aspect. I mean, a lot of times it can be tough if, you know, if you have somebody who's brand new to an industry and they really don't know anything about it and, you know, and they're, they're trying it out. And it's, again, it's, it, you, you can never say never. I, I just, I don't know if, if, but, but it's, but it's all, we also don't have a crystal ball, right? Like we just don't right. know. Nobody knows what tomorrow is going to bring. And, and I, you know, it's, and sometimes, sometimes those can be hard to basically figure out like, okay, is, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? You know, um, you know, so it, it can be tough, you know, and, and, and small businesses do, have a very high failure rate. You know, I try, I try to remind people that, 
you know, a lot of people think in terms of, of I think a lot of people have seen the old statistic of, you know, uh, 90% of businesses fail within the first two years of operation. Well, I'll take it a step further than that. A lot of people don't realize that even after you make it past the first two years, 90% of the businesses that make it past the first two years don't make it to year seven. Um, so, so, you know, so you're talking about if you, if you make it seven years in business, man, you're, you're like the top 1% that, that actually got, that actually got through and made it. So, um, so, so like kudos, you know, kudos to you, you know? Yeah. Now, and that's, and I think all that you mentioned is a really good guide. Again, it, it one, it's really, again, it's really not a guide. It's kind of what to expect. And even if you want to engage in a conversation with Joe, just reach out, just reach out. And if you don't know what questions to ask, Joe will ask them. <laughs> he will and, ask them. And, and I will tell you, I, I have always made it a point. I, I have told literally hundreds of people over the years that I, I've always said to people, you know, I, I always keep an open door policy and I always tell people, Hey, you know, you use me as a resource, you know, I, I'm around, you know, if I, if I can connect you with someone in the, in the local community, always happy to do it. You know, I mean, obviously being in the chamber is a great thing because it, it, it obviously connects us with a lot of people in a lot of different industries doing a lot of different things. And, uh, and I, I always tell people, Hey, you use that. If I can make a, a warm introduction for you to somebody else, uh, I'm, I'm always happy to do that. Or if you just need, if you just have questions, if you just need to come in, like I, I have literally told people over the years, like, Hey, look, if you're talking to another bank and you're not sure if you're getting a good deal or not, like call me up. Like I'll give you an honest answer. I'll tell, mm -hmm. I will, I will give you the honest, I will say, you know what, that is a fantastic deal and you should take that and run with it, you know? Or if, you know, if I see some things that I think maybe a little weird or, or maybe out of the industry norm, I, I'll, I'll mention them. I'll just say, Hey, you know, you might want to go back and talk to him about X, Y, or Z because that just doesn't seem that just doesn't seem normal, you know? Um, so, but, uh, but yeah, I've, I've always tried to operate in that fashion and it, it has, it has served me well uh, to this point for many years. Cause I've had, I've had a lot of people that have, have come back to me. Um, and, and I think, and, and uh, the, the last note I, I kind of end on with, with this on this is that I've told people before that no can mean no today. It does not mean no forever. And, and what I mean by that is there's a lot of times when somebody will come into a bank with it, with it, they'll say, Hey, can you make me a loan for this? Can you give me an SBA loan, whatever? And, and for various reasons, I might have to turn them down and decline them and say, no, sorry, we, we can't make that loan today. But I, I always tell them like, listen, you know, no today doesn't need, it doesn't need to mean no tomorrow. If you go back and do X, Y, and Z, you know, come back to me, come back to me. And then, you know, it's six months and a year, we can talk again and I'll see if I can get it done then. And, and, and I'd say I've, I've had a lot of people that have come back to me a year later, two years later. And so I wasn't able to do it for them then, but they, they followed my advice and they came back a couple years later and we were able to do it for them. So, and so I think sometimes you got to play the long game a little bit. Yeah. And I think you raise a good point too, because look, it can be disappointing if you go to a financial institution and not get approved for something. Mm -hmm. um, but trust me when I tell you, we're, you know, especially institutions like ours and yours, uh, Joe, we're, do we're doing what's right by them. And we're also doing what's right by us. You know, that's we're not right. going to, yes. we're not going to write a, a piece of business that's going to get the business owner into, into incredible trouble, um, you know, for, for whatever reason and whatever scenario. So we're, Trust me when we tell you we're looking out for your best interests there. And but you know what? At the same token, sometimes it's just not there, right? Yeah, sometimes yeah, the opportunity it's just not there. And like you said, you know, it's it's kind of a long game. But um, again, for folks that are um, want to get in touch with Joe, how can how can we reach you, Joe? Uh, best way to reach me is uh, you you can email me at uh, J. Burquist, so J for Joe, so J Burquist at harleysvillebank.com. Uh, or you could call my main office number is area code 215 256 5573. Uh, that's my direct office line. So, you know, either either of those places is great. I'm also on LinkedIn. Uh, I've been on LinkedIn for, for many years and have many connections. And uh, and I, I tell people all the time, hey, send me a link. Let's, you know, let's join up on LinkedIn. And I, I've got like 2,500 contacts on there. So I tell people like, hey, look, if you see somebody on there and I, again, if I know them and I can, you know, help you make an intro, I'm always, always happy to do that. Yeah. And, and Joe's uh, true to his word. Um, Joe and I, and I forgive me because I can't remember. You did wind up hooking me up with somebody um, in the past. Again, I can't remember, but you were just, it was one of our first interactions. You just were genuinely open about connecting me with this individual. Um, so 
take him up on his his uh, <laughs> his advice there and reach out to him on LinkedIn. Um, we just have a few more moments left. Is there anything else you'd like to share um, about Harleysville, about yourself before we go? Uh, no, you know, no, I, I just, I think, I think just a, just a, uh, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I guess, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not sure what to say, maybe, maybe like a word of caution, I mean, we, we got some more inflation numbers today that just, just were not good, and, and so I just, you know, I just tell people, you know, just be, you know, maybe be a little conservative in your finances over the next, you know, six to 12 months, just don't get, don't get caught off guard, you know, just maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe put a little bit of extra money away at the end of the year, if you have it, and just kind of, you know, make sure that you're, you're kind of prepared for all scenarios, you know, just in, just in case next year uh, turns out to be a little bit more of an adventure, you know, that's all, that's all. Right. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much for being a guest today. If you want to hold on just a moment, uh, we'll make sure there's John. (laughs) Joe's the man. (laughs) (laughs) You're the man. (laughs) And and thank you for having me, Bill, just because I, I, I I get that in there before the end. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, it's absolutely, it's, it's my pleasure. Um, so before we go though, I wanted to thank Haley. Haley is actually running the entire board for this episode. So Haley, thank you. Looking forward to many more episodes. Um, my name is Bill VTL. I'm the Director of Institutional Relationships and Marketing for the Victory Bank. There she goes. She's quick. All right. <laughs> I like it. Um, for the Victory Bank in Limerick. And until we connect again, all my best. Bye for now. I love the intro, man. I love the music, man. It gets.